Welcome back to Ben's Tech Lab. Today we're going to tackle a little Raspberry Pi project. My YouTube studio is mostly controlled using this Stream Deck and an app called Companion from BitFocus. This app lets you control your video production equipment to do things like switch cameras. I can press a button on here and switch to the side camera or press another button and switch to the overhead camera. This is really convenient and you can program the buttons to do all sorts of things like mute and unmute microphones or start and stop live streaming or recording and you can customize it to exactly what you need in your application. You can run Companion on your regular desktop computer, but if you want to isolate it from your computer so that it's always working regardless of what your computer is doing, you can run it on a dedicated Raspberry Pi. So that's what we're going to set up today. The easiest way to get started with Raspberry Pis is to buy a complete kit like this one from Canakit. I'll include a link in the description below. This kit includes everything you need to get started so you don't have to worry about having forgotten something when you go to start your project. So what do we got in here? Well, we've got the Raspberry Pi itself. We've got a power adapter. We've got a case for the Raspberry Pi. We've got a memory card for the Raspberry Pi. We've got an on off switch, optional fan, optional heat sinks, as well as a memory card reader uh, for your computer to flash images onto the memory card and an HDMI cable for this Raspberry Pi. And to show you where you put those heat sinks, they've got a little manual here that highlights the important components on the board. Oh, there we go, we got some heat sinks stuck on the important bits. Next up, we'll uh, open our case here. The uh, board, the single board computer just fits in. The end that does not have all the USB and ethernet just kind of fits under a couple of little clip clips and then just rest down like so. And then we put this guy back on top and then we can throw this, uh, this on top. There is a built-in control or spot here for a little fan if you would like a little fan. Um, I'm not gonna put the fan in there right now. I'm just gonna use it with these little heat sinks and uh, we should be all right. All right, last but not least, we need to get a memory card programmed to run the software on this Raspberry Pi. So first thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna open our little memory card reader and get our memory card out of this little bag. The memory card just goes right in the end of the USB. There's a tiny slot there. And then you can plug it into your computer to flash that memory card. Okay, so I've plugged the SD card reader into my PC and the next thing we're gonna need is some software to burn an image onto that SD card. So we're gonna download Belena Etcher, which is free. You can just go to belena.io slash etcher. We'll download that and uh, install it. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna need to do is to download a companion Raspberry Pi image. I'll put links in the description so you can find this easily. All right, our uh, Raspberry Pi image has downloaded. Let's open up our Belena Etcher and let's pick flash from file. We're gonna pick our uh, companion Pi image we just downloaded here. Then we're gonna select the target, uh, which is a 32 gig card that came with this Canna kit, which is perfect. Select that and let's click flash. So it says it's gonna take about six minutes, six, seven minutes here to flash the image. Surprise, it wants to validate the image as well. Yay, flash complete. All right, so we got our SD card all flashed here and we are ready to put it in the Raspberry Pi. So let's just pull it out of the USB, turn over the Raspberry Pi and just stick it right in there. Like so. I won't normally have HDMI attached to this Raspberry Pi for companion, but just for initial setup, if we wanna check what IP address we got and that sort of thing. So I grab a keyboard and mouse just for initial setup. Again, we won't be doing this normally. We'll give it some ethernet here. Plug in the power last, just in case it's already on. And we'll boot it up. There we go, we're all booted up. So uh, let's try it out here. So first of all, you will notice that in the last 10 messages or so of the boot, it will say your IP address. So in my case here, it's 192.168.1.131. All right, so I'm back at my computer here where I had Companion installed before. I'm gonna click on the task tray in the uh, P 
PC here and open companion and click launch GUI. This is gonna be my local copy that was on my computer before that I wanna move onto the Raspberry Pi. I'm gonna click this import export tab at the right side of the screen and click export full configuration. This is gonna download a dot companion config file that we can import into our Raspberry Pi instance so it has the same layout and functions that I've got set up on my old companion. Just save that file there. Now we're gonna close the companion that was installed on the computer and go to the companion that's on my Raspberry Pi. So that was 192.168.1.131 in my case. So here we are, we're at the web interface for the companion instance on my Raspberry Pi and it's empty. You can see there's no button set up or anything on there. So let's go to the import export tab again and click import configuration. We will go to the download location and choose the file that we just recently exported and import. I'm gonna replace the entire configuration with what I had on my desktop PC before. I'm gonna click replace. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, there it goes. So it took a couple of seconds there to import, but there it is all uh, set up on the Raspberry Pi. Let's just check our connections here. All right, so I had to reboot the Raspberry Pi after importing the full companion config before the uh, uh, connection to my ATEM Mini Extreme ISO actually succeeded. So I think that it probably just needs that reboot to get that whole config loaded up and, and working right. So reboot seems to go. So let's try it out with some uh, with the emulator here before we plug on the Stream Deck directly. Let's go ahead and uh, click a button. Let's switch my, uh, my confidence monitor here between multi-view and program. Great, it's working. All right, let's plug my Stream Deck into the Raspberry Pi. All right, so I'm gonna click uh, Rescan USB. Ah, there it goes. And the uh, Stream Deck XL just showed up and it just lit up here. There we go, people. We've got a Stream Deck hooked up with a companion Raspberry Pi. Wow, that was really easy to get going once we actually flashed the SD card. All I had to do was export my companion config from the PC where it was running before and import that config on my Raspberry Pi companion that we set up today. A quick reboot allowed it to pick up the connection to the A10 Mini Extreme ISO as well as my Stream Deck on USB and everything seems to be working exactly as it was before. Hey, if you like this video, leave it a like down below. It helps me out quite a lot and consider subscribing. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.